Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabans here to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We we'll cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. And we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and that we see them. And today we got a hell of a show for you guys. Before we get into it, uh, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you follow me on Instagram. My handle is C-T-A-B-A-N-Z. Follow the channel, Dreamers Pro. It's called Dreamers Pro. And uh, make sure you check out the Dreamers Pro podcast we have pinned below. Let me get into this topic here. So as you guys know, about three to four weeks ago or three to five weeks ago, all hell broke loose on the internet when Stephen A. Smith, <coughs> excuse me, decided to finally respond to Jason Whitlock, right? And he basically went on ESPN. He prepped everyone. He's like, I'm going to be saying this. Everyone, everyone should be ready. He said, I went out there. I spoke to my pastor. I spoke to the executives. I spoke to my sister. I spoke to everybody, right? Um, and Stephen A. Smith was said it was something that he wants to get off of his chest. Stephen A. Smith then puts together about an hour-long show um, calling Jason Whitlock that bat dirty. What do you say? That fat bass. All kind of crazy stuff, right? Uh, the show ended up, I think that show must be now at like 2.5 million views, if I'm not mistaken, right? And he totally, 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 totally went off. Then Jason Whitlock then decided to respond. Um, and he responded to Stephen A. Smith. Uh, on his show, he actually did a series of shows. And ultimately, if I had to pick who won, if it's like a rap battle, if I had to pick who won, I think Jason Whitlock won ultimately. Uh, what is it at the end? So what happened? As you guys know, the Super Bowl, it was just previously Super Bowl weekend. And you had various people doing various press runs. And Stephen A. Smith was one of them. Uh, and he went on Sirius XM uh, radio with Chris Mad Dog Russo. And uh, while he was there, Mad Dog was asking him about a range of topics. And then out of nowhere, Mad Dog asked him about the situation with him and Jason Woodlock, where he was like, we, we saw you lose your composure. Like that wasn't you. Um, do you regret doing what you did? And Stephen A. Smith, you know, when he decided to respond, actually said, actually doubled down and said he wishes the only thing he regrets is that he didn't say more. But before we even get into his comments, this video is brought to you by our sponsor, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is really simple. Instead of just selecting a team, you just select two or more players, pick more or less their projected stats, and then you place your entry. For example, this week, I'm selecting two entries. Stephen Curry for more than 25 points, and then I got Anthony Davis for more than two blocks, and Damian Lillard for more for more than four three-pointers made. Price Picks is also the only daily sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So for example, if you have a player who gets injured in the first half and doesn't return to the second half, that player gets automatically rebooted. What I also love about Price Picks is that it offers weekly promotions like Taco Tuesdays. Each Tuesday, Price Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So go to pricepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's go to pricepick.com slash CLNS, use code CLNS for a first deposit match to, of up to $100. And once again, once you support this sponsor, you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So what we want to do is we're going to play exactly what uh, Stephen A. Smith had to say in, regard, in regards to Jason Whitlock, to Chris Mad Dog Russo, and then we're going to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what he had to say here. Did, did you put yourself sort of in the dirt? Could you have avoided the Whitlock situation when you had the big fight with him? I could have avoided it. I didn't want to. I didn't give a damn, and I still don't give a damn. I'm not backing up from one syllable I uttered, and I will reiterate what I say without saying his name because he is straight trash and I don't ever want to have anything to do with him. Okay. But I will so say this, but I will, I will say this to you. He is an individual that has gone about the business of attacking me personally, attacking my contemporaries personally, attacking my friends personally for 12 years. I never so he's said got, a word. He's gotten after you for I a long time. I never said I a word. Know that. And he's gone after me for a long time because he wanted us. He was a failed experiment at ESPN. He wanted us to help him. OK, none of us wanted to work with him. None of us wanted to be under the brilliant. Remember, he was the he was the guy that was put over what is now called Anscape, but back then was called the undefeated. OK, and this guy could barely get anybody black that wanted to work for him because we all know what he is. OK. And so what I did was you can sleep I picked at night. Up, I picked up. You're damn right. I sleep. I, matter of fact, the only thing that's made me not sleep well is it's I him. wanted to say more. I wanted to say more. Wow. But here's the deal. I called. 
Um, I text, rather, Bob Iger, Jimmy Pataro, Burke Magnus, Dave Roberts. And in Pataro, Burke Magnus, and Dave Roberts' case, I also emailed them. And I called my pastor. I called my sister Carmen. I called other colleagues. No one, and I mean no one wanted me to do it. None of them were okay with it. I said, I heard you, but this is my show. So they all wanted this is you my, to pass. They all wanted that. me to pass. I said, I'm not passing. Now, after this, I'll pass. But I wanted to do something. Get it off your chest. Get it get it off my chest. And I wanted it to be a situation where whenever this man brought up my name again, the world knew exactly where I stood with him and why. Now you got And it. you let it go. I'll never say anything about him again um, like that. I'll never speak like that publicly again. That's not my style. But do I despise him? you damn right I do. All right. One last one before you go. I know you're busy, and I appreciate you coming on sure. here today. Uh, so you heard what Stephen A. Smith had to say. What are my thoughts? I think that both of these men benefited from this beef. Let's just be honest. They made some good money along the way. Uh, they generated a lot of attention. A lot of people spoke about it. Uh, so from a financial standpoint, it did well. Some people say Stephen A. Smith doesn't need the money and blah, 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 blah. I understand that. But from an engagement standpoint and growing his platform, it definitely helped. Because drama sells. Whether we like it or not, it sells. And that's the reason why, uh, what is it, that they uh, that they did it. That's the first thing. The second thing, um, I think that even though Stephen A. Smith went out there and said all of those things and he says that he's not ashamed and he would have doubled down, he would he would do it again. I think there's a part of him, and he probably won't admit this, there's a part of him that probably uh, regrets it. Why? The reason I say that is because he broke character. He broke character. On his show, was Stephen A. Smith cursing? Yeah. Occasionally. Occasionally. But in this particular instance, he went like, he really, really let loose. And if you know anything about Stephen A. Smith and the company that he works for, it's Disney. And Disney likes to maintain a certain image. So when you do something like that, it's not 100% positive. That's the reason why he had to ask his bosses for permission. No matter how much he says, I have my own podcast, I can do my own thing. He can't. If he could if he could really do his own thing and say what he thinks, then why do you need to discuss that with his daytime employer, as he, as he normally says it? In the case of Jason Whitlock, what Jason Whitlock did was he allowed Stephen A. Smith to go off and then said at the end, look at this dude. He just had a, nerve, he just had a total breakdown. Right, because he was cursing and all of that. And at the end of it, Jason Whitlock looked like the person that was more even kill, even though he was actually antagonizing Stephen A. Smith. He he knew what he was saying was going to irritate him. And maybe he baited him. And maybe his ultimate goal was to bait him, get him to come outside, and then when he finally does come outside, destroy him with facts. And I think that if we're if we're having a facts argument. And the points that Jason Whitlock won, uh, brought up, I think Jason Whitlock easily won. But, you know, it's Stephen A. Smith, and uh, he's a man of his word, and uh, he says he's not backing down, and he doesn't regret it. So what I want to know from you guys is simply this. Number one, who do you think won the dispute uh, between Stephen A. Smith and Jason Whitlock? And number two, do you believe Stephen A. Smith hold wholeheartedly that he doesn't regret uh, what he did? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts in the comments, and we catch you on the next show. Peace.